Today we're going to talk about solving quadratics graphically. Now as I mentioned before, there are several ways to solve quadratics. The first way is using the cross method, which doesn't always work the way you want it to. Um, the next way is going to be solving quadratics graphically. Now what that means is going to be, you guessed it, creating a graph and charting your values. So what we're going to do is solve the equation x squared plus x minus 4 equals 0. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a graph. And you'll notice over here I'm setting the parameters of my graph where x is going to be less than or equal to negative 3, but also less than, or sorry, x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 3, but less than or equal to positive 3. So I'm setting the parameters of my graph. Because if I don't, what that means is I could keep going uh, forever along the x and y axis. But this way, it just kind of gives me a snapshot of where I want my graph to be. But it also tells me that my answer is pretty much going to be in between negative 3 and positive 3, or else why would you graph something out? So there's a little hint for you. So first thing I'm going to do is construct a table of values of y equals x squared plus x minus 4. And then I'm going to draw the graph. So first thing I'm going to do is start with negative 3. If I plug negative 3 into my equation of x squared plus x minus 4, I get negative 3 squared, which is 9, plus x, which is minus 3. So if we're keeping tally here, I have 9 minus 3, which is 6, and then minus 4 gets me 2. I'm going to go ahead and complete the table for these values. And negative 2, positive 2, and 8. All right, so now I've created my table. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and graph this. Now, because I'm magic, I have this graph already done. And you can see I've set it up, I've definitely set it up to where it's more than um, negative 3 and positive 3, which would be somewhere around here. Oh, here we go. If I were to set it up, I would just be encapsulating these parts. So the negative 3 and positive 3 would kind of look, would just give me the values here, which is really all that I want. Because what I can see is that I have my answer here, one of my answers, is where the, the parabola crosses the x-axis, and I see it crosses at x equals about negative 2.6, and then I can see that it again crosses the axis at about x equals 1.6. So again, they're, they're estimates, but it helps us to visually represent, to get a good visual representation of what our quadratic looks like, and that's going to be important in the future. Let's take a look at another one, because this is where it gets a little interesting. Now we're going to solve the equation x squared minus x plus 3 equals 0 graphically for negative 2, where x is greater than or equal to negative 2, but less than or equal to positive 3. Again, that's giving you a super hint as to where your answers are going to lie between. So what we're going to do is go ahead and input the values into our graph. First thing we're going to do, we have, we're starting out with x equals negative 2. So I have negative 2 squared, which is 4, minus a negative 2, so that's really plus 2. That gets me 4 plus 2, which is 6, plus 3 is 9. So I have my values here, and then I continue to fill the values. All right, I have my table. Now here's where it gets interesting. Because when I draw my graph, I notice that it does not cross the x-axis. If it does not cross the x-axis, then there are no solutions which means, technically speaking, I have no real roots. So 
So having no real roots tells me I have no solution to the problem. That's a total bummer, but that's okay. Again, here's where the visual representation helps us to see that there are no, there is no solution. If I tried this with the cross method, I would probably be going back and forth, back and forth, trying to find values that would work and become frustrated thinking that there has to be an answer somewhere. If I look at the graph, I can see that there are no real roots. So an equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero has no real roots if the graph of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c does not cut through the x-axis. So as we've seen before, it can cut through in two places, and I have two solutions. By the way, it doesn't have to cross on either side of the y. The graph could also cut through like this, and I would have two solutions. Huh. All right, anyway, sorry. Um, so two solutions, and in the example that we saw yesterday, or the last time you viewed the video, was that I could have one solution as it touches the x-axis at that point, but then the last example, no real roots, is the one we just drew in the uh, graph before, where it does not cross the x-axis. So those are three different things that you need to be um, on the lookout for when you are graphing your solutions.